right okay hey um so thanks for sharing uh, about your vision what god has put in your heart uh, let's continue to like seek him pursue the lord and uh, get clarity and not get discouraged by the you know either by the smallness of it or the or the you know the the, the bigness the magnitude of it right uh, don't get uh, uh, intimidated or don't get discouraged in any way um, because um, uh, you know when you're sure that it's it's from God you know that it's in you know, God has put it in your heart and uh, you see that um, you know the impact that it can have right and it's for the glory of God uh, it's uh, it elevates God and uh, and of course in fulfilling that vision uh, we'll full our destiny that God has for us and um, you know uh, if you've studied uh, or if you've uh, uh, I don't know if you did it last semester about kingdom building and you know the kingdom of God you see that uh, many God calls many to uh, be part of the vision right? God will call others um, uh, with a similar life calling to be part of the vision maybe for a season maybe for even through the you know, for, a, for your lifetime to be part of that vision to to bring in uh, what you yourself, you know, uh, are not graced to do, maybe, you know, uh, maybe you you have strength and you have, uh, you know, the gifting and the grace in certain areas, but then God brings others to be part of that vision, to part of that work um, and for his glory. And, and the beautiful thing is that the others who come to be part of, you know, your life's calling and you know vision that god has put in your heart they fulfill they get to fulfill their destiny or they fulfill, they get to fulfill their call and the vision that god has put in their hearts in fulfilling you know in being part of this vision so uh, and that's uh, one other way of us being the body of christ and that's how god plans it and it's also wonderful when it, when it comes together right so um so yeah the smallness of it or the bigness of it not to be discouraged and also to be open when you know at, at the right time of course when when god brings in others to be part of the uh, you know your vision or what he has put in your heart and God brings others to be part of it in order to strengthen the work, in order to make it even go, you know, further, uh, and uh, in uh, to, for the purposes of God, right? Okay, yeah, Sri Kumar, uh, you have a question. Yes, Pastor, I I have a question. Uh, yeah, I just need a, a little more clarification on Matthew six twenty two to the three, where mm -hmm. it says that uh, if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. What exactly Jesus is, uh, you know? Um, yeah, Let, let's just read that fully. Uh, Matthew 6, 20 to 23. I think we just read it. The now. lamp of the body is uh, the eye. Yeah. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. Yeah. And if your eye is bad, your whole body is full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, yeah. how great is that darkness? Because yeah. that's my confusion that if the light is that is yeah yeah so the thing is obviously he's, uh, he's he's going beyond physical vision you know he's talking about uh, things that we see things that we understand and uh, and the thing is that if what I consider to be light you know uh, is da actually darkness right if what I consider to be uh, the way or the answers or uh, enlightenment if that is actually not light but is darkness and my whole body is full of it and how great is that darkness right yeah Tarun, you want to share something uh yeah pastor just a thought on this aspect yeah. Uh, yeah. of uh, eyes becoming darkness now uh, uh when, when we just like you know for example when we walk into a room in the house uh, we'll be able to see things and we can walk around because we know where the couch is, where the TV is because of the light. But in case if we are, our eyes are closed, uh, it will be darkness. <laughs> the, you know, the, uh, even though the room is well lit up, uh, we cannot see anything. And when we cannot see anything, it, it is difficult for us to navigate through it. So, uh, you know, the light that, you know, uh, it can be shut down right at the point of the eyes itself. And uh, uh, the way you have explained about uh, a true vision is liberating is more like, uh, uh, mm. I know if I have to go from one place to another, uh, it, it is easier for me to know the destination so that I can walk through it uh, easily and I know what not to choose. For example, if I walk into a right. store like Decathlon, 
if i want to be an athlete i will walk into the athlete <laughs> section and buy my running shoes but if i uh, don't have a vision i might buy a tennis shoe and a golf uh, pants and i'm i'm i'll be lost because there's so many options uh, it yeah. uh, so a true vision liberates us and uh, uh, the through the eyes we we see everything like uh, when the light is in the eyes uh, we see everything true yeah 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 so our choices everything gets um, yeah, you know directed um time which is a great resource again uh doesn't get squandered uh and so on yeah absolutely yeah so um yeah so shri kumar hope that helps um in the sense like even our understanding even our you know in the natural and also you know when it comes to the spiritual like if what i consider to be you know even uh you know right if in if in case you know if that is wrong you know how great is my darkness right so, so is it means that uh, when he's saying there that uh, yeah, the light that, which is in you is darkness means uh maybe uh, is he is jesus is saying there that my understanding thing is in darkness is he is it because of the lack of enlightenment in me yeah yeah if okay. that okay. is you know if uh, because he's you know the second part of i'm looking at second part of verse 23 if therefore the light that is in you is darkness yeah that's why i'm you know, which means <laughs> that yeah so what is really guiding me yeah so what is actually guiding oh. me what is actually enabling me to see understand the world everything if that is indeed darkness yeah yeah uh, i think what anita is sharing you know what he consider as true uh, is not true what is actually uh, you know falsehood um then how great is that darkness because i'm you know i i'm moving towards it guided by this uh, my my perception my uh, choices everything is guided by this um, just like how vision enables me to guide my choices and you know like what tarun shared you know what to avoid what not to you know what what to choose and what not to choose so if that sense of direction and and choice is guided by this sense of light but it's indeed not light itself you know it's it's not light then how great is that darkness that is in me yeah thank you pastor thank you right right shri kumar yeah okay so so the importance of uh, vision i think all of us uh, understand there's no there's no need to you know uh, shy away from it um, and it's 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 you know it can be a very enjoyable process of um, you know communing with god and uh, receiving from him and uh, and you know one thing for us to uh, understand is uh, you know we can go to 1 corinthians um, uh, i think it's 3 or is it 2 uh, and it talks about um, yeah 1 corinthians 2 and verse 9 and verses 9 and 10 right i has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which god has prepared for those who love him but god has revealed them to us through his spirit for the searches for the spirit searches all things yes the deep things of god and he's obviously you know the verses before that he's talking about uh, you know how he is speaking the wisdom of god the revelation of god uh, you know which god ordained uh, before in the ages and this time the uh, you know the kairos moment it is being made known right to the to the church to the world um but the thing is that the holy spirit god he he's a revealer right uh, he's a he's a spirit of revelation and wisdom he's the one who reveals he's the one who shows and he has he does reveal them to us through his spirit to our spirit right so he uh, if things are hidden it is so that we might find if things are you know not clear it is it is so that progressively you know things will be clear and sp- the spirit of god wants us to come to a place of receiving from him another, another thing that we see is uh, you know that, that will be encouragement for us you know for those of us who think that hey, i I'm, i'm not getting any clarity is this you know ephesians 2 and verse um, verses uh, verse 10 right for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works uh created in Christ Jesus for good works which god prepared beforehand that we should walk in them so he's talking about the fact that god is we are god's workmanship we are his works of art shaped by him created by him 
and it also talks about the fact that uh, we are created in Christ Jesus for something. You know, there is purpose, there is meaning in in, in everything in our entire life, um, and so we are created for good works. And um, it says that God has already prepared these good works beforehand. He knows us. Uh, he formed us. So he has prepared these good works that we should walk in them, right? So he has prepared. So why? You know, because he wants us to walk in it, right? So the Spirit of God will direct us to these good works to walk in it. So it is not like he's playing, excuse me. So it's not like he's hiding it. So that you you know live your life just struggling and uh, trying to find what it is, and then you know um, you come to end of it and you say you know how frustrating I did not you know it's not that you know when we pursue when we are clear in our intentions when our hearts are loyal towards Him, Scripture says that He wants to show Himself strong, and uh, you know this is what He wants to do. So that should encourage us. Okay, question from Rebecca K. Is it only referring to vision? Can also about what we see and avoid, like lust or sin, which enters through our eyes, um, puts our entire body to darkness. Yeah, yeah, Prabhakar. So, so that is what we were looking at. No, we were looking at um, what we consider to be truth that gives light to our decisions, to our, you know, to our life ahead. What we consider to be the way, uh, or it can even be moral standard. So, if that is not light, if that is a you know the opposite of light then how great is the darkness so yes it refers to this as well okay um okay so the thing is for us to state our vision now you know putting that into words um you you see that some, sometimes it can be you know, what's uh, in our heart and uh, what is in our mind to really put it uh, when we write it down it, it can be it can take a lot of effort Right, because you know sometimes a revelation which is in your heart, um, communicating the, that uh, it's uh, it becomes a problem, right? Uh, God puts it in our hearts, and then um, uh, it to communicate that you know, you know, it's so strong, it's like uh, it's like burning inside of you. But then to be able to put it in words to communicate it, it's uh, it takes some effort. It takes the grace of God. So, but we can do that. Right. So, and and the Lord's instruction is that we capture that, we we write it down, put it down, uh, state it, so that it is clear, so that there is clarity. So, um, so also, you know, when we when we write down, uh, you know, for some of us, I know we are, I don't know what the term is, but then, even as they speak, they are processing things. You know, it becomes clear as they are speaking it, um, and, and which is verbal. You know, verbally they are putting it in words and communicating it. But for some of us, it can be visual. You know, we need to see it. Right. So you write it down. Either you write it and you speak it out, you read it out, or you know, you write it, you see it. Then it's, then it's so much clearer. Right. Um, so yeah. So state your vision. Put it. Capture it. Uh, write it down. Uh, the thing to do, uh, the next thing to do would be to, you know, especially, you know, this is um, this is true. If uh, one is leading, you know, one is a spiritual leader. When you say leading, you know, don't think of, you know, big organizations. You know, that is also the scope of leading. But also, even if it's uh, one other person, or even even if it's two others, to be able to communicate that vision. Hey, this is what we are about. Right? This is what God has called us to do, to be able to communicate that vision, share that vision. Um, so, you know, so so those who are part of this vision, uh, if it's a church, maybe, you know, the staff, maybe the, the people, the congregation, uh, everybody's part of this vision, right? So God has put this vision and you're faithful to it, you've started something and you're working towards it. And here are these people who are also drawn to the vision um, that uh, you know God has put in your heart and you birthed it and you're walking in it and they are connected to it. Now we need to communicate the vision, um, maybe reiterate that vision over and over again. Right? That's that's the other thing. So, but to communicate that vision. Okay, that's the responsibility we carry as leaders to communicate that vision. So the thing is, um, they should know the vision right? to come to an understanding. Okay, uh, this is what the vision is. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not sharing the screen. Let me just. Uh, um, 
Okay. So to um, uh, communicate with the intention that people know it, right? So so therefore, you know, uh, even when you are stating it, that it, let it be clear, let it be simple, um, so that um, your team knows it, your ministry team knew, knows it, your congregation knows it, your um, your staff uh, they know it, uh, and if it's you know like. Um, uh, was it Kennedy who said the organization, you know, so that your your leaders, your managers know it, your your uh, you know the, your team knows it that this is what the organization stands for, and then and I think every organization you know would would put it you know would capture it. Maybe there's a frame on it. There is a you know something uh, which which points to the fact with that which which actually communicates day in and day out it's, it's there clearly you know as you walk in it's somewhere there so people see it and understand this is what the ministry is about this is what the organization is about so uh, so it helps to communicate you know it, it helps to know it right um, the second thing is what happens is when we communicate the vision um, people own it right? so there's a difference between just knowing it and owning it. Right. Owning is that I make it mine. Right. I take it and I make it mine. Okay. It it resonates with me, and uh, I I take it and I make it mine. Okay. And say okay now I want to be part of this. I want to pursue the same thing, right? As uh, as together as a church, together as as, a, as fellow believers, or as um, you know as ministry leaders or as uh, you know team members. Uh, I want to. I want to pursue the same thing. So you begin to own it. You make it yours, right? You take it. You you. It's like you know buying something, and you take it, and you say, "This is mine." Okay. So you've bought in. You've taken it, and it becomes part of you, right? And uh, of course, it it changes everything about you. You are enthused. Enthu you know, you're enthused by is this zeal and a passion that comes with it, because it um, you know it's it's part of you. It's uh, it's uh, you are one with it. You agree with uh, it, with it, and then there's a witness of the spirit to it, witness of the Holy Spirit, God witness, and then there is there's so much joy, and you're you know, and you're totally um, you have so much zeal, so much passion, right? Because uh, you wake up and uh, and this is the vision right in front of you, and so you know you're just going after it, uh, and uh, you know it's producing life, it's life giving, it's life producing, and you're you're energized by it. Right, day in and day out, you're energized by it. Okay, so, uh, so that is what communicating the vision uh, helps, right? So, as a leader, you communicate it. It's it's no longer in your heart and in your mind, but it is out there for others to hear, others to see, to know, to own it, to to run with it, right? So that is what we saw in Habakkuk two and two. It says, so that the one who reads may run. Meaning, let that person be moved to action, to act upon it. So it's no more you, you know, taking and running, but there are others also who are, you know, being, uh, let's say for use of a better word, I'm just saying activated, right? It's giving them meaning, it's giving them purpose, because it resonates with their call as well, what God has called them to do. You know, you see, so there's rising up, you know, there's rising an army, there's rising a body of believers who are, you know, who resonate with, with the call, who are saying, you know, uh, we are pursuing the, we're going after this, right? It's so, it's no more just you, but it's it's whole lot of others who are getting connected. So, so the importance of communicating, right? Um, Okay, let's uh, read uh, Nehemiah uh, 2, 17 and 18. And, and Nehemiah, this is what he says, you know, about uh, about building the wall, rebuilding the wall. Um, then he said to uh, them, uh, sorry, then I said uh, to them, you see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lies waste and its gates are burned with fire. Come and let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach. And I told them of the hand of my God, which had been good upon me, and also of the king's words that he had spoken to me. So they said, let us rise up and build. Then they set their hands to this good work. 
right? So um, this is what Nehemiah does. Nehemiah talks about uh, the condition. He talks about the favor that he experienced at the hand of the king uh, who provided protection, who provided, you know, all this timber and everything. So, um, so and, and uh, he, he talks about the favor of God, which enabled him to actually, you know, share that with the king and so on. So, so he shares that entire thing uh, entire encounter and his, uh, you know, all his, uh, uh, you know, what that, whatever he went through, till at that point, and then their response is, "Let us rise up and build. Let us rise up and build." And it says that, uh, and then they set their hands to this good work. So, um, of course, he gives the invitation: "Come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem." Uh, and he shares, this is what happened. And then they say, let us rise up and build. And they, and they start to build. And, and we know, you know how they, uh, despite all that was happening, there were so many things that were happening, so many things that came against them. There was plotting, there was ridiculing, uh, they trying to in, intimidate, you know, Tobiah and Sanballat and all the others. And, and uh, they schemed, they manipulated, uh, but despite all that, the the wall was built, right? The wall was built, and and uh, and we see that people uh, stood with Nehemiah. Okay, so that is what um, the vision can, you know, uh, the uh, having the godly vision and uh, communicating that godly vision. That is what uh, can actually. Uh, that is what can be accomplished, right? Um, so. Uh, I remember the words of uh, Bill Heibel, Bill Heibel talking about vision, um, you know, the, the senior pastor of Saddleback Church, uh, going through a problem right now, but, um, but he uh, shared about, um, uh, about vision and he says, you know, vision leaks, right? It's like, it's like a bucket which, which has these minute holes and you fill it with water and there's a slow leak, right? It just keeps going out, water keeps going out, and, and one day it's just empty. So vision leaks, and uh, because we're all human beings and we tend to forget, so, so repeat so that people are reminded, and it's reiterated so that people can um, remember, it stays with them, right? And um, the thing is, when we get into the mission of it, Right, the mission which we're going to look at next. You know, the mission, which means uh, okay, all the strategies, all the um, uh, all the activities, and uh, uh, you know, all the the actual work of it. When we when we actually get into it, there could be a tendency to forget. You know, like when I when we talk about worship ministry, you know, there is this practicing, there is this choosing of songs, there is the, you know, the actual coming together. And, and even in the practice, there's so many things like, okay, what is the dynamics of it? Um, you know, the tempo and the thing, you know, how do we transition from one song to, you know, so many things, so many details that you're looking at. And it's sometimes, you know, it's possible that you forget the big picture. So it's the big picture is to please God's heart and worship. Yeah, in, in spirit and truth worship, uh, without holding back in, and the, that's the that's the first thing, right? And to encounter His manifest presence. So, um, in getting into the details, in looking at the minute things, sometimes we forget the big picture. Hey, why are we doing this? You know, why are we meeting? We sometimes forget the big picture, and it's true of um, you know teams. It's true of uh, maybe even organizations like managers and so on you know you, you you you're tackling the day to day you're tackling the challenges and uh, it's sometimes it's possible that we forget or temporarily you know you just forget the big picture why are we doing this and once that happens you know sometimes the solving of the issue uh, takes a different direction it's not in line with the vision and because uh, we we might you know do something else, you know, we might uh, take uh, you know even uh, even our planning and activities and everything you know it can take a different direction. So the importance of repeating the vision, the importance of reiterating the vision at opportune times. Right. So 
I think I shared earlier, like to, you know, when we, whenever we have our meetings, or you know, I'm just talking about the worship ministry. So um, try to, you know, try to uh, reinforce, repeat, repeatedly share. Hey, this is what, and do it in creative la- ways, like an activity, like a game, or you know, like uh, uh, you know, something, so that it stays and people are also reminded of it. And I'm sure as a church, you know, there is. Uh, uh, I'm sure you've seen some of our announcement videos uh, every Sunday that is played, uh, that is streamed online as well. So uh, it starts with the vision, right? Uh, the vision of all people's church is the Rada. So, so there is this reason, you know, for repeating it so that uh, we don't forget it. It stays with us. Uh, we are reminded of it um, over and over again, right? Okay, so that is about uh, the vision. So we see vision is important. Uh, vision is uh, it's life changing. It's also life saving, right? And we're talking about a godly vision, right? We're talking about a vision where it's not something that is done in the flesh. It's not for a you know a selfish uh, self out of selfish ambition or anything. You know there is ambition involved. It's godly ambition. You know. Uh, People need to be ambitious in God uh, in order to be, uh, you know, to to reach those things that God wants us to do. You know? And if if God says, okay, is is the commission, or the great commission, we see that go into all the world. So one has to be willing, able, and also have that ambition. Okay, I want to go into all the world, right? Uh, and otherwise, there is no fulfilling of that great commission. So. That ambition is not a bad word, but if it is selfish ambition, then it's definitely you know fleshly and uh, you know self-serving and not God-serving, right? Okay, so so uh, to have that godly vision, you know, it's so so important. Okay, the other thing is now you know vision can be big, vision can be exciting. Okay, but one thing we need to understand that um, you know another way to spell vision. Is uh, is this? This is how you spell vision. That it's work. In fact, if you want to qualify qualify it, it is hard work. Okay, and uh, it's it involves a lot of uh, sweat and tears and uh, you know all that. So it is actually work. You when you talk about a big vision, it's a lot of work. Right. It translates into work at the end of the day. You know, it needs to. Right? Otherwise, there's no fulfilling it. Okay. So when we look at um, the work that needs to be done, and that is what we call as the mission. Right. So the mission statement. What do we do? Uh, what are the things that we are involved in? Like some of you shared. Right. You know, house a house group, or you know, raising up leaders. You know. So these are things that are teaching. Uh, building, right? So these are things that you're going to be doing right, consistently every day, and that is work. Right? That involves work, that involves effort, um, time, resources, everything. Right? So, uh, so the mission talks about that. The mission statement, uh, okay, this is what it clarifies. This is what it states. It states, okay, what you can do or what you are going to be doing. Okay, and uh, it also talks about to whom you're doing it. Okay, is it to um, you know a certain group of people? Is it to um, you know a certain individual? Um, to whom you are doing it? Okay, some of you said okay, uh, we do manufacture to the world, right? Is is that what Kennedy said? I forget. So you know you're saying okay, this is who we are doing this for, right? And uh, and also talks about how you're going to get it done. Some of the details, some strategies, etc. You know, example. You know, look at the mission statement of APC. Just sharing there, um, discipling and equipping believers in the Word and Spirit to mature them into Christ likeness, uh, fulfill God's purpose for their lives, and to have influence and impact for God's kingdom. Right. So, to equip. You know, it's 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 an equipping. It's a training. Um, kind of a uh, you know that is one aspect of it. Right, so we are going to be doing that, so that believers can mature into Christ likeness. They can fulfill God's purpose for their life, and so that they can have influence and impact for God's kingdom. Okay, so that's the mission. So, what was the vision? If you look at the vision, it talks about being salt and light, being an influence for impact. Okay, being an influence of change, 
and it talks about okay city of bangalore the nation the nations uh, you know that is a scope of the vision so it talks about okay the future okay this is what we want to be this is what we want to become right uh, a voice um, to the nation to be salt uh, influencing to be liked impacting so that's the vision but when it comes to okay translating that into work okay this is the work the work of teaching the work of discipling the work of equipping um, believers so that they discover the call they get equipped to do the work of ministry and in turn you know they are going to be influencing they're going to be impacting you know, salt light they're going to be you know be the voice of truth the voice to the nation and to the nation so you see that the work that we do is actually the the mission right so it's going to be daily it's going to be monthly and it's it's going to be a lot of sweat it's not going to be uh yeah you know it's 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 uh it's not going to be a you know very relaxing uh a drifting kind of a you know it's like a relaxing walk right it, it involves work it's going to be effort so so be prepared for that be ready for that say okay it's, it's uh, you know god has given me god has blessed me with these with these capabilities now yeah you know he's it involves me stretching it involves me doing these things and in doing that you realize you know um you realize hidden strength you realize that god has put strength in you okay how will you know that you have strength when you push against certain hard things right uh when you carry certain the weight of certain things and you realize that hey you know i'm able to do it right um greater is he that is in me he has actually you know he's trained me he has um you know uh, he has brought me to christ likeness i'm responding to situations to difficult situations in a way that i could not do before i am doing that he has put his strength in me right he has built me up in the spin up spirit he has built me up in the inner man and i will say you know just like the scripture says be strong in the lord and in the power of his might now all that is coming out now you know when i face those people circumstances situations and and even internally you know emotionally you know, pressing past certain things right so uh, a mission would involve that so be alive to that be alive to that reality okay have this vision now the mission would involve that and and i know that you know uh, some of you most of us you know we walked in it you experienced that but i'm just you know putting that in words so you know that okay it's part of it it's part of um, you know uh, what goes into fulfilling the vision okay then when we look at goals we are looking at specific objectives right uh, and you can you know the when we when you say goal we can we can think about football soccer uh, you're scoring a goal your uh, the the objective of the game or uh, uh, of each side playing that game is to take that ball or kick that ball pass that ball and take it to that you know hit it through that goal post and net you know it, so it, it goes through so that's the goal okay so these are specific okay these are very specific objectives which means that it will have uh, uh, you know we're going to look at plan uh, action plan so it's going to um, uh, it's going to have time it's going to have resources it's going to have people these are specific things okay so so uh, just an example of uh, apc as a church you know we we look at the mission now we, we also stated uh, equipping believers right so uh, so these are some things so certain specific objectives right so equipping people so which involves teaching training engaging in strategic outreaches evangelism discipleship uh, planting of churches right sending out people uh, who have been part of church to to plant churches uh, to engage in missions i right? see these are very specific activities specific goals uh, to be reached and this this could be you know a, within a time frame okay this year and uh, this is what we are doing in order to reach this right so specific goals so uh, when we need to um, pursue these goals or go after these goals this would need some plans this would need a work plan this would need an action plan uh, I, i need to do these things in order to achieve the goal right uh, nothing new i think all of us uh, know know this and have uh, you know 
maybe you're planning things in your own life. Um, uh, but it helps us, right, to stay focused, okay, it's to stay focused on the vision and mission and uh, uh, to, again, um, so that we can uh, stay on track and fulfill, right? The thing about vision is that, um, well, the vision can always be refined and also enlarged. You know, the scope of the vision, uh, God would enlarge it you know, as we we are faithfully walking in it. We are you know, following, pursuing um, the call of God. And God in, increases the scope. You know, maybe we didn't consider, we thought, okay, this is what it is. It's about one thing that I need to do. But then God says, I want you to replicate that in 10, 10 other ways, right? 10 other uh, places. Um, and, uh, and so God will in, enlarge that vision and right? to refine that vision to be even more uh, impacting, even more, um, you know, uh, the, so the reach is better and so on. So, um, so that would happen as well, okay? So let's look at planning. Okay, now, um, planning is very simply put, it's just a series of steps, okay? Step one to uh, step 10 in order to achieve it, achieve something, right? Step one to step 10, it's uh, it's just a, you know, it's, it's just a series of logical steps, okay? If, if you're going to have, uh, you know, uh, uh, birthday celebration, if you're going to have a dinner, then, well, you plan for it. Uh, the planning would involve who are the people to call. Um, you know, if it's, uh, if it's a dinner, you know, what is the menu? Uh, what are the things that you're going to make? What are the things that you're going to, I mean, you cook yourself. Uh, uh, is there something that you're going to buy? Uh, what are the ingredients do you need for cooking it? Now, who's going to cook and when are you going to start cooking? When are you going to start you know, finishing cooking? So we do this in daily life, right? Who are the people who are going to, who you're going to invite? Uh, when are you going to invite them? When you invite them, you're going to tell them what time it is, etc. So you see that we we plan for things, right? Uh, even the most, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the person who says that, uh, you know, very vociferously, I'm not a planner, I'd like to go with the flow. <laughs> Even that person would plan certain, you know, certain things. So we we plan, maybe not consciously thinking of it as a plan, but we do, right? So um, Proverbs four twenty six, ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. So you're saying, okay, just think about the activity, think about what you're going to do, think about the step that you're going to take or the series of steps that you're going to take. Uh, think about it, ponder, reflect. So what, what is going to be um, the end result of this? So that, uh, and let all your ways, right? Let all your ways be established. Established, meaning be firm, be made firm, be made strong, be sure, right? So pondering the path of our feet is not an unspiritual activity, okay? Um, it, is, it is not. So we're going to look at uh, some verses uh, and maybe some arguments uh, that people might have against planning, but really it is not. Okay. okay, so a plan has objectives, a plan has timeline, a plan also would have, you know, if you're working in a team, uh, very simply put, I'm, I'm sure you're looking at uh, this in, in detail in, a, in another course, um, workplace, uh, uh, workplace ministry and so on. So. Um, but simply put, you know, a plan has objectives, a plan has a time frame, a plan has also, you know, uh, resources and, and who is doing what and by what time do they finish, etc. right? Um, uh, Proverbs 6, 6 to 8, you know, go to the ant, you sluggard, consider the ways and be wise, which have no captain, overseer or ruler, provides her supplies in summer and gathers her food in the harvest. Um, so we see that uh, being very industrious and and working and, and providing for what is ahead, right? The need that is ahead, the need that that would arise in future. So that is what the ants, uh, ants do. They are like an army moving, working, uh, providing for 
uh, uh, when the harvest is happening, providing for what is uh, ahead, right? Okay, so planning is preparing for future. It involves having foresight, anticipating some eventualities, anticipating what is to come, and, and then having a series of steps or a course of action. Okay, so planning can be short term, you know, you can, you can have, it can be daily thing, it can be a weekly thing, it can be a monthly thing, and right? it can be uh, for a for a quarter or three, three months, um, for uh, six months, and for the whole year, or even for chunks of time, like four years or five years, uh, uh, you know, every five years, and so on. So, um, so we can plan ahead. So the thing is, like, um, people say, okay, is it is it right to plan? Okay, uh, because some of the verses that are used, some scripture portions are, you know, are this, you know, Matthew 6. Um, we looked at 23, 20 to 23, but, you know, 24 to 34, where um, it talks about uh, you, you can't serve God and mammon, right? No one can serve two masters. And the Lord says, you know, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. Okay. Uh, it's like one blanket statement, but he goes on to, you know, add some specifics to it, right? He says, do not worry about your life. So what is he saying? What you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on, is not life more than food and, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? Verse 28, so why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin and yet i say to you that even solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these now if god so clothes the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven will he not much more clothe you O you of little faith verse 31 therefore do not worry saying what shall we eat what shall we drink or what shall we wear for after all these things the gentiles seek for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So, you know, these scriptures have been used, misused, twisted, and uh, ca caused a lot of confusion uh you know in the body of christ for the believers and the, and the reason is this the lord saying do not worry but um people have taken it to uh, to mean that okay do not work or do not plan or you know do not work towards this or plan or plan towards this right um so the thing is this it's uh the Lord is very clear. He says, you know, don't worry about your life. Don't worry about your clothing. And then saying, you know, don't worry. Okay. And all these needs. Uh, verse, uh, I think it's verse 32, right? It says, your heavenly father knows you need all these things. So, which means that these needs, um, you know, the heavenly father knows that you need it. So, these are legitimate needs. There's nothing... You know, it's it's not like an illegitimate need. It is it is required. It is a need. It's a real need. And the Heavenly Father knows that you need these things, right? So the focus is on not worrying about it. So worrying is being preoccupied, being concerned with it, and all the time, where to the point that it cripples you, it uh, brings you to a state of inaction. Yeah, that you're not able to enjoy, that you're not able to do things, that you're not able to be productive, right? It's taking the focus off and you're just worried about it. Yeah, and the word used there, meram now, which means uh, your mind is divided. It's cut into a lot of pieces and you know, 
is preoccupied thinking they're not able to focus right so so that is what uh, it's talking about so it's not so when we say plan you know, plan is not worrying planning is not lack of faith right planning is it's preparing it's preparing saying okay this is what we know that you know uh, provision is from god whether god provides through um, um the yeah many are the plans in a man's heart but it's a lord purpose that prevails yes um yeah and also um proverbs 16:3 you know commit your works to the lord to the lord and he will establish your thoughts right um so so the planning also you know yeah like anita what you said like uh, many other plans in a man's heart in the sense if uh, there are two ways right you can include god in the plan or you can you know exclude god in the plan you know it can be your own plan so when you include god in the plan he's going to reveal his purpose and that's going to prevail that's going to be part of your planning that's going to energize your planning and uh, you know and uh, proverbs 16:3 talks about how we can commit our works to the lord and he will establish our thoughts you know further our thoughts are established so that our actions you know follow uh, established again so it's not um, worrying uh, planning is preparation so there's nothing uh, you know uh, unspiritual about planning right uh, we're going to look at uh, some guidelines for planning which will further expand on that okay so then the other thing other scripture is uh, we'll close with this another scripture is james 4 13 to 17 you know where james uh, says come now who's you who say today or tomorrow we will go and such and such a city uh, spend a year here buy and sell make a profit <laughs> you know it it it's like you know the futuristic vision right uh when whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow so what is your life it, it is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away instead you ought to say if the lord wins we should live and do this or that now you now you boast in your arrogance all such boasting is evil and then you know therefore to him who knows to do good and does not do it to him it is sin so here it is very clear again you know you're boasting you're arrogant the lord is not involved in it okay it is it is fully you're fully you know it is yourself and uh, you know ruled by yourself and your senses and everything uh, the lord is not part of it you know you're not even considering the lord you know what is the will of god like what is the plan of god what is god does he approve of this that like, you're not even thinking about it and and then there is a lot of boasting and it's uh, it's because of uh, your arrogant so you see the whole heart posture the whole attitude so um so you know from that place if you're going to be saying you know today we're going to do this today we're going to be doing this or oh, i'm going to be a voice to the nation no that's not what it is right uh so it's it's involving it's it's submitting everything in the will of god to the will of god right and uh, and we are relying on him obviously you know, even whatever we are doing we are saying that god you know it's it's you you're our resource you're our source you're our supply right but we also say you know with you i'm more than a conqueror god and with you i'm more than a conqueror greater is he that is in me you know we don't forget that right? we forget that with him we are who we are right and so uh, so that's the other aspect you know whether it's it's not worrying it's not boasting so planning is not boasting we post planning is submitting so now you see that planning takes on a different perspective it's like it's exciting right it's like dreaming with god right it's it's a beautiful it's a beautiful thing right um so yeah so we'll stop here and then we'll we'll uh, come back next week Okay, so so this work that um, you know that vision statement, and uh, may the Lord give more clarity, and uh, yeah, so just dream with God. You know, yeah, God wants to do so many things through our lives, and uh, He's cheering you on. He's cheering us on. So yeah, so just go to Him. Just open up your life to Him and say, let's let's do that, and, a, and say, God, you know, show me, lead me, right? Okay. 
we'll stop here. Thank you. God bless you. We'll see you guys later. Thank you, Pastor.